hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel so today we are going to discuss about the types of research misconduct so when you are talking about misconduct definitely you are it's a very simple english word misconduct in some nothing but what something which is not right so you have, they have done some mistakes or here the mistakes do happen with the people mistakes do happen with the research scholars so these mistakes should be avoided maybe it may be because of the some malpractice or maybe some uh, misinformation or you are giving some wrong information or uh, whatever it is like that so uh, that's how the things works so engineering research should be conducted to improve the state of art of technology so it has to be conducted what is the engineering research motivation or a goal there has to be some kind of application in terms of the with the use of the technology so that the society can get benefit of so the research integrity encompasses dealing fairly with the others so it's not like that i have to do something that has to be there like that right so honestly about the methods uh, methods and the results replicating the results wherever the possible so as to avoid the errors so protecting the work welfare of the research subjects ensuring laboratory safety and so on so that means you are having very whatever you are going to do in every step you try to make uh, you know sure that uh, it is not uh you know uh, there is no nothing wrong practices has been done so it has to be some all of uh, whatever the practices you are doing for your uh, uh, betterment of the technology development that cannot be used i mean that cannot have any harmful effects or something errors or something like that so in order to prevent mistakes uh, peer reviews are there that should be uh, should take this before the research output is published so every international research journals has got the reviewing systems which which we which are which will identify the technically sound in that particular area reviewers will be there when the person submits if i do some research i have to publish it right i submit that particular paper in a particular journal now this journal will have the reviewers it will send this paper to the reviewers and the reviewers will review okay and the peer reviewers will be like a mostly at least 3 to 5 reviewers will review so out of 3 or 4 reviewers the majority of the reviewers think that this research is copied or if this is is not innovative not new or something like that your research will not be published if if any hazard concerns are there if any ethical issues are there if any uh, copyright issues are there that also will be uh, exposed here so these are the reviewers uh, reviewers are nothing but the some some of them uh, you know uh, the good uh, with the good knowledge or with good expertise or experience the people will be there in that particular area for them the paper will be sent by the journal and they will review it and they will see what are the things and if any things uh, clarity is required they can ask from the authors if any questions are there they can raise those questions that's what the reviewers will do so reviewers will just review your paper and they will give their uh, opinion on your paper whether it should be accepted or not accepted whether it is be published or not published right so in order to prevent the mistakes the beware reviewers will be there that should the system should be taken place and every journal has got it so different types of research misconduct so we are having four different uh, types of the mis uh, research misconduct we have one is fabrication that is nothing but illegitimate creation of the data if you imagine you are doing some research and you are not getting the results what you want what you expect so what you will do you will end up with fabricating the results fabricating is something that illegitimately you are taking someone's data and you are using it in your work that is a fabrication right so next we are having falsification falsification is nothing but inappropriate alteration of the data imagine you got some uh, solar cell efficiency around 20% in your research but you are writing it as 30% you are manipulating the data so that's why it is called as a falsification because you are giving the wrong results or false results next plagiarism so taking others work okay and sans attribution so that means you are going to Uh, take somebody's work and if you are doing that obviously that's why we are nowadays we are having a plagiarism check right the software will it will check for any similarity is there right so other aspects of research misconduct also we can discuss so the first thing is fabrication which is nothing but illegitimate uh, creation of the data so here the fabrication as i told you you are taking the particular someone's data and you are using it and you are not even giving any acknowledgement or you are not even giving any copyrights nothing 
you are not even taking any permissions or something like that all those things will come into picture so fabrication is the act of conjuring the data or acquiring the data or experiments with the belief of a knowledge about what the conclusion of the analysis or the experiments would be so but cannot wait for the results possibly due to the time length pressures from the supervisors or customers so you will end up with you know fabricating the data you will end up with change make you make changes whatever you want you either we copy the other uh, people's data and you add some uh, insert the data into your work so that is called as fabrication falsification is nothing but the misrepresentation or you can say the misinterpretation or illegitimate uh, alteration of your data or maybe the experiments even if partly also even the small part also it's been done to support a desired hypothesis even when the actual data received from the experiment suggest otherwise that means actual data is something and you are uh, representing it something that will be your false obvious right so based on that we are having the falsification right so falsification and fabrication of the data and the results they hamper engineering research and cause false empirical data to percolate in the literature okay red trustworthiness of the individual is involved it incurs additional cost impaired research progress and cause actual and avoidable delays in technical advancement imagine you <coughs> somehow you do you add up some wrong data i mean you just uh, add this is the data i got even though you have not got it and you publish it and imagine the other people who are following that then again they will end up with the lot of mistakes and all and when they are not getting they can raise back the question and the journal will ask then they will retreat then that means they will take your uh, 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 journal the whatever the published data is then that will be nullified then they will take actions against you guys so that's why we need we should not do any falsification or a fabrication so and third one is plagiarism taking others works and uh, attributions for example plagiarism takes place when someone uses or reuses again the work including the portion of the others maybe it can be the text or data tables figures or illustration or even the concepts as if it were his or her own without explicit knowledge so they think that i mean whatever when we take some images from the other published work and if i publish that so we think we will be thinking that this is our work and nobody is having uh, nobody knows it but that will we will come to know about it not scientific community will come to know about it so we are having the verbatim copying or the reusing one's own published work is termed as self plagiarism and also is also an unacceptable practice in scientific literature for example i have around 25 research papers now so if my next paper if i am using all the data which is already published in 25 years that is also what self plagiarism that is called as self plagiarism because i cannot say that it's my work only so i am copy pasting it so you are just repeating the data right that is also not acceptable so the increasing availability of the scientific content on the internet seems to encourage plagiarism in certain cases but also enables the detection of such practices through the automated software packages that's why we are having the software packages like uh, plagiarism check and all if for your uh, the betterment uh, for your most of the reputed journals they will accept less than 10% of, uh, of the plagiarism should be there that means only 10% Uh, words should be should match to the already published data not more than that not for not about the result just words so how are supervisors reviewers or editors all uh, alerted to the plagiarism you know that supervisors are nothing but the giver guides reviewers are nothing but the journal has got the reviewers who will review uh, the papers or scientific literature before publishing then the editors are nothing but the journal editors will be and the journal will have editor like how press has got editor similarly initially they look for the quality and they look for your overall appearance of your paper and they will look for any grammatical error and they also look for whether all the laws or all the uh, formats has been followed with the, uh, or not so original author comes to know and informs everyone concerned so initially once anybody has copied or something like that so one of one of the way is that the imagine i have copied somebody's work if uh, your work so what happens you will come to know that and i have published so you will come to know that this is my work it is i have already published in 2010 this guy is doing the same thing this same thing he copy pasted so now he can raise the question so original you are the original author now so he because he gets the information he comes to know and then informs everyone which is concerned maybe your supervisor maybe the journal 
okay you will start explaining you will start telling that this is my work so the next way is sometimes a reviewer finds out that's about the supervisor right next uh, sometimes a reviewer finds out about it during the review process while doing the review process the reviewer will tell that this work has been published long back so he will uh, also send you the link this is where it is published so this is a copy data right so that is also a plagiarism can reduce or readers who come across the article or, or a book while doing re research for example when i am doing research i have to review papers if i am re reviewing around 100 papers if you don't know what is reviewing please go and uh, see my first video i have explained it in detail so when i am reviewing do reviewing i'll come to know that the particular uh, uh, paper 1 is having the same result as particular paper 10 so here both the results everything is copy pasted so i will uh, uh, intimate the journal a i mean the paper a whatever the journal it is being published and paper 10 whatever the journal is published so it is their duty to take care of that so who has actually copied whose data so however a low similarity score does not guarantee that the core document is plagiarism, plagiarism free if anyone is having if anyone is good at english he can manipulate with the different words so you will get less uh, automatically less plagiarism but it doesn't mean that it's not copied we need to check for the images the data all those things also it takes human eye to ascertain whether the content has been plagiarized or not obviously with by looking at the data only will come to know that so it is important to see the individual scores of the sources and not just overall similarity index every individual course we need to see for example only less than 10 percent is there fine if i cannot publish it if that 10 percent is directly copied by only one paper that is a problem that's why individually we need to check so setting a standard of maximum allowable similarity index is inadequate usage of the tool so for example if the maximum similarity i will accept around 40 percent and all that is not it's inadequate right so next uh, patchwork plagiarism is there Patchwork is more difficult to evaluate so when you are doing the patchwork so from here half from there half here and all that is very difficult to evaluate so a researcher should practice writing in such a way that the readers can recognize and differences uh, recognize the particular differences between the ideas or the results of the authors and those that are from other sources so that you are clearly you need to mention in the discussion this is done by this group or this research and this is done by the another people and i have done this work so which is little bit different from the other work so we can clearly say that uh, so that uh, even though your methodology is same the your results are same and uh, not same the results are not same or you can say there is some deviation or there are you something for example if i use some silver nanoparticle same method i can use it for gold nanoparticles so here the silver nanoparticles also published data so you can say that so and so people have been published on silver nanoparticles i work on gold nanoparticles as simple as that so next and the last one is other aspects of research misconduct so many other aspects are also there we discussed about three things and the fourth thing is is other aspects so serious deviation from accepted conduct uh, could be con <coughs> constituted construed as the research misconduct for example when you are uh, uh, when you go beyond the control of whatever has been accepted okay that means it should be as unaccepted that is also misconduct and when there is uh, when there is both deception and damage a fraud is deemed to have taken place definitely when there is a deception when there is a damage definitely you can expect that is a fraudulent which has happened so sooner or later ethical violations get exposed if not today after 10 years or five years that will get exposed and that and after that they will uh, release your and they will retrace uh, 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 retrace your uh, article and then they will remove the, your article from the journals so simultaneous submissions of the same article in two journals and while it's a publication policies usually publication policies uh, like that um, you have to uh, submit one paper in one journal at one time one unless and until you get whether the rejection or acceptance you cannot publish you cannot submit the same manuscript to other journals that is strictly prohibited okay so another issue is that when mistakes are found in an article or any published content they are generally not reported for, for the public access unless a researcher is driven enough to build on the mistake 
and provide a correct version of the same which is not always the primary objective of the researcher so for example if your work has your paper has got some errors or some problems which is not actually is uh, uh, right or a facts so there also if it will be a problem then the researcher has to have these things those all things come under other aspects of research misconducts so that was about the four different research misconduct next topic we are having ethical issues related to the authorship that we will discuss in the next class